Good morning and welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church. We are delighted to have you with us this morning. I invite you to pray along with our designated responders and to sing along with our music today. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we, we have, have not, not loved, loved our neighbors, neighbors as, as ourselves. ourselves. We, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And, and our, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let, let us adore, adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let, let us, us adore, adore him. him. Our psalm today is Psalm 84. We will read it responsively by half verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By, By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God. 
and look, look upon, upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He, he will, will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from, from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. First reading this morning is from 1 Kings, chapter 8. Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant to the, of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all of the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be con confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father, David. But God will indeed dwell on the earth. Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the, for the foreigner calls to you so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
Our first canticle today is Canticle 15, The Song of Mary. Let us pray it responsively by half verse. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For, For he, he has, has looked, looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in, in every generation. generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He, he has, has scattered, scattered the proud in their conceit. conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers. To Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 10, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Do we have our reading from John? Fred? A reading from the Gospel of John, starting in chapter 6, verse 56. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will leave, live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. When I was a tiny little girl, my family belonged to Grace Episcopal Church in Lapeer, Michigan. Undering the, under the sheltering small arch of the sanctuary sat a grand old altar. And this altar was always hung with these heavy floor length embroidered hangings on all four sides. We called them Jacobean frontals. I have no idea why. There was one for every liturgical season. And my favorite of these was the celebratory hanging, which was a, a creamy white background covered in embroidery. There were scrolling vines and leaves and flowers and, and perched among all of this were multicolored birds. But the best thing about the altar, what most people never saw, was underneath. Because if you were small <coughs> and shy and the noise and the chaos of coffee hour got to be too much, you could run away to the dark, still sanctuary and lift up the edge of those heavy hangings and crawl under the altar. And if you did that, you would discover that really it was just a great tall dining table with round turned legs of dark black walnut. And in that space, you would find yourself in Elijah's cave or the fish's belly, maybe even the empty tomb. The carpet, as is required in Episcopal churches, was red and nubby. And the high, heavy hangings muffled the noise and blocked the light. It was this warm, dark, quiet space. It was like curling up in the lap of a wise grandmother and being wrapped in her shawl. 
I think that perhaps the poet who wrote Psalm 84 and I might have just had a similar early experience of God. Because this is the song for someone who has met a God who is both gentle and fierce, who holds nests of birds perfectly still for long months while swallow eggs hatch and flight feathers grow, and who laughs with delight when those fledglings take their first wobbly flight. A God who does not mind the mess of baby birds cuddled up in a holy place, who says, well, hello there, love, to the sticky child who climbs under a holy altar, who delights, in fact, in the noise of little ones running laps in the sanctuary and provides safe arms for those little ones or not so little ones to curl up and rest in when our eyes are tired or our hearts are heavy. This is the God we meet in Psalm 84, who makes springs flow in dry places and dances on the heights with pilgrims and protects her children and gives them good things to eat, whose house is not contained within any four walls and is the only place that we feel really at home. It's a different sort of the face of God than we hear in a lot of our scripture. It's not necessarily the, the facet of God that a lot of our prayers emphasize. And we could interrogate why that is, why we choose to emphasize a God of judgment over mercy often, or power over gentleness, or retribution over care. But here is Psalm 84, protector of sparrows, auntie to house martins, ushering us in when we are lost or bereft or don't have anywhere else to go. This is God, whose image we are made in, who we are called to follow, invited to follow. What would it take for our holy places to be sanctuaries like that one I experienced as a child, to be the open arms into which a hurting world could fling itself to find comfort and a safe nest. I suspect that it would not require a class, definitely not a committee, maybe not even a prayer book revision or a motion <laughs> at convention. I suspect it does require that we live our daily life like sparrows, like children giggling with God under altars, knowing there's always room for one more, for one more little nest, for another little one to sneak into that holy place, that God can hold us all, that in God's hands there's always more room for all of ourselves, even the bits that we might not like so much. And for the sparrows who don't look like us swallows or act like us or speak like us. That sparrows and house martins and swallows and blue jays can all nest together under the eaves of God's altar in safety. In a world of disconnection, where we are splintered and fractured, a world that seeks to isolate us and make us care only about ourselves. There is an altar where the birds of the air can find a safe nest side by side as neighbors. And how much more 
might we human beings be invited not to splinter, not to divide and wrestle and fight and harm and exclude, but to make our nests side by side within the circle of God's embrace. And now I would invite us to share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and, and the, the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also and with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and, and sustain us with, with your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all people to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may be, be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live in you and you live in me, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, we may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. We pray for healing, guidance, and comfort 
for the Sharifi family, the Ahmadi family, for Margaret, for the Diocesan Refugee Resettlement Program, for Natalie Rose, for Chris, Leo, and David, for Tommy, Robert, Prentice, and Beverly, for Angela, Jim, Judy, Frank, and Ken, for John, Carol, Barbara, and Prue, for Ellen, Irene, Father Stephen, Marge, and Betty, for Eric, Patty, Eddie, for David, Richard, Jack, and Lois, for Amanda, Mark, Jan, and Kirsten. We also pray for those who have died, Jim and Diane, and their family and friends. Only when we lift to you all those in need, for those who are sick, for those who are dying, and for those who watch over them. together the general thanksgiving almighty god father of all mercies we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made we bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life but above all for their immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.